Welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro, glad you could join us on a Tuesday. By the way, reminder of a uh, pretty cool guest we got tomorrow on the show. So Pete Buttigieg's brother-in-law has made some statements recently over the last few weeks saying that he believes Pete Buttigieg is anti-God. Well, his brother-in-law will be coming on the show tomorrow. So this should be a very interesting debate. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, his brother-in-law is a pastor. And that might have a little something to do with his religious beliefs on Pete Buttigieg, I would imagine, being gay, being anti-God. So his brother-in-law will be joining us live tomorrow on the show. That will be very interesting. And let's make no mistake about it. Pete Buttigieg is still very much so in the mix to possibly be the front runner in the Democratic Party. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out. So that should be interesting well, he, tomorrow. So, You know, he did actually just get the support of the second largest newspaper in South Carolina right before the debate tonight. Mm-hmm. So that's going to help him a little bit. So that should be an interesting interview tomorrow. Uh, here's something else that's pretty interesting. We know that this Houston Astros cheating scandal is not going away anytime soon. Even Derek Jeter made some comments yesterday saying that it is a – Black eye for baseball. I think everyone that has not been involved with the cheating scandal would agree this is horrible for Major League Baseball. It's terrible the way they handled it. They have ruined careers because of it. And the fact that none of these players are being disciplined for it is disgusting. It is outrageous. Major League Baseball, everyone involved in this, including the higher-ups, should be ashamed of themselves. And I don't want this story to go away. I don't. So... This is an interesting situation here because, as you know, a lot of these Little League teams across the country even call themselves the Houston Astros. And there have been several districts that are now stripping those names away because of this cheating scandal. It's happening across the country. So Bob Bertoni is the district administrator for District 1631. He runs a Little League out there in Pennsylvania, and he joins us right now on the line, and he runs one of those districts of Little League Baseball that has banned the Astros' name, and Bob joins us right now on the line. Bob, I appreciate you taking some time to join us. How are you doing? Hey, what's up, Bob? Hi, guys. How are you today? Thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming on and, and spending some time with us. Okay, so give me the basic rundown of why you decide to make this decision, Bob, when it was implemented. All right, well, you know, basically this that decision is twofold. Now, I oversee 23 leagues in my district, and we had a few leagues that do carry the Astros uh, as a nickname. And when the story broke out in California, I had a couple presidents of my leagues reach out to me and say, hey, what what should we do? What are we doing? Should we do the same thing? What do you think? So to take the onus off of them, I met with my staff, and we decided – as an, as a district to recommend that we do not use the Astros name and and the reason for that is twofold one we didn't want our kids putting on that jersey and then all of a sudden they're being ridiculed for it or there's a lot of negative connotations that go with wearing that uniform right now i sort of uh, i use the example i think it's the scarlet letter now of baseball that yeah. jersey and i just didn't want to put our kids in a bad situation where they're called cheaters before they right, right. even a pitch is thrown in a game. So right. I think it was more to protect them, first of all, sure. uh, to protect our kids. Because, you know, although they may know what's going on, I don't think they understand the severity of it. So uh, I thought, let's protect our kids and let's not give them the opportunity to be put in that situation. That was the first thing. Well, Bob, first of all, let me let me say this, my reaction to this. I applaud you for doing this, number one. I think it sets a great example for these kids to show these kids cheating is wrong because let's be honest about it, guys like Altuve and some of these, these kids look up to players like that. And for you to set an example and say, we're not going to call ourselves the Astros, at least not for now, because what they did was wrong – like I said, I think it sets a great example for these kids and showing them that cheating is a bad thing to do, and adults do it sometimes, and it's wrong. So I, I applaud you for doing that. I would imagine uh, many of the parents would agree. Is there anyone well, that has disagreed with you? Well, you know what? I Outside of a few hate mails, and I'm sure they probably came from the Houston area, other than that, the response has been very, very positive. And, you know, for what you just said... That was the second reason why we we did this, that we're using it as a teaching tool. In in our 
own little league pledge that says we will play fair and strive to win. Our motto is about courage and character. And, and, you know, in today's society, as you guys very well know, there have been kids don't understand that there's consequences for actions, whether it's a a negative uh, consequence or a positive consequence. We just don't. We don't do that anymore as a society. So we, we said, listen, there has to be a punishment here. And kids have to understand that cheating is never an option, ever yeah. an option in, a, in any sport you play. Let me, can, so, Bob, can I ask you, uh, you know, I would well, imagine you have a background in baseball yourself. You played when you I were younger. Do. So let me ask you this then. What do you make of this situation where the players are not being held accountable in any way, shape, or form? You know, <laughs> It's funny that you should ask that. You know, I really sat down and I thought about that. And I'm thinking, are they really not being punished? Because maybe the commissioner's uh, idea all along was to say, look at the public, the ridicule that they're facing from the public, from right. the fans, right. from the leagues, the embarrassment now that they're facing. Is that really their punishment? Because right now... You know, I'm not sure I want to be in an Astros dugout, no matter, you know, if if you were involved in it or not. Yeah. So maybe the commissioner's idea was that, you know, the public scrutiny of this would be their punishment. And I, and I, I, and I, and I get that, and you're right. But with that being said, what I don't like is when some baseball purists, not all, and I'm not saying you would say this, but there are some baseball purists out there that are saying, let baseball police itself. Let some of these pitchers peg these guys the first couple weeks of the season. I think that is one of the dumbest things I have ever heard oh, in I my agree. life. Yeah, I mean, I agree. You know, I, but, I agree. But why no. would you want to put someone at harm? Yeah. Why would you want to, the risk of injuring someone? Right. Listen, two wrongs don't make a right. right. Remember that. Exactly. So, 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 you know, I always, I've been asked, what do you think would have been a proper punishment? I have a great one. You know, we strip. We strip Olympic Olympic athletes after they test positive for drugs. We've taken away coaches' victories after they found out that we've been cheating. They should strip them from their title. And my, this is my opinion now, mm-hmm. not anybody else's. This is my opinion. They should strip them of their title and then take away half their home games for this year. Make them play on the road. Houston loses all that revenue, and those players are inconvenienced by being on the road three-quarters of the season. I, I think that's where he should start. And, you know, I wouldn't want to make that decision. I feel bad for the commissioner. This is the first time in the history of sports that anyone has ever faced this. This is a tough decision, but this is a decision that after you make one, you could go back, look at it, and tweak it once you become clear. You know, when you write something angry, you're not supposed to send it right away. Sure, I, sure. I think it's the same concept. Yeah. I made a judgment. Maybe I'm wrong a little bit here. And now I got to go back yeah. and tweak it. And I think if he does that, it might ease the the, the controversy today. You know, I, 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 I think that the way that Jim Crane, when, when he was asked about the scandal, where he basically just said, that, oh, you know, we had a good team. We were going to win the World Series no matter what. The way that he was so laissez-faire in, in answering that question, I think he should be forced to sell the team at the 2016 I'm valuation. I, I, I have a question about, the players in your league have you had any players that are that are big Jose Altuve or Alex Bregman or Astros or Carlos Correa fans or George Springer or Garrett Cole Justin Verlander I mean, the list goes on they have so many all-stars yeah. on that team have you had any players that that have been big fans of these guys who have been outspoken I obviously they're, they're no they're they're 7 to 12 years old but they have been outspoken and saying you know that these guys did wrong and how it's and how it's affecting their lives well, you know, I think the most popular award right now is they're all disappointed. Yeah. Uh, they're disappointed. Uh, uh, a, uh, you, you made a very good point, J.D., uh, the, the lack of remorse, not just by the ownership, but by the players as well, to say that it didn't have any effect. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I <laughs> listen, yeah. I've been in this game a long time, and if I knew you're throwing a changeup, I'm going to hit it a lot better than <laughs> if I didn't know it was coming. Exactly. So, um you know, I think every even even Altuve fans, who Altuve happens to be probably the most popular player in this area, a lot of his fans are just disappointed. I think more is is the right word to use, the correct word to use. Um, so, you know, I haven't. We're not into the heart of the season yet. We're just in the beginning phases, and that's why we did it now 
because teams, you know, will be ordering uniforms and stuff like that. But uh, I guess as the season goes on, you know, I, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about it. But, you know, our message is is trying to, you know, be a teaching moment and to remain positive and, and understand that there has to be consequences for, for actions. And that's, and that's the, the message that we're trying to spread. Were you surprised that Mike Trout, who's very, very, who's not outspoken, but he was so outspoken, he actually just basically said the same thing you did. He said, hey, if I knew what was coming, I would have a lot of fun out there. And I, I can't imagine that you could say that when you know the pitch is coming, that it didn't affect the outcome of the game. That's crazy. Were you surprised he was that outspoken? Oh, I, I was. I was. And I, I'll go one step further, too. I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but the New York Yankee AAA team is in our backyard mm-hmm. so we they they do a lot of work with our little leagues throughout our area aaron judge was unbelievable with our kids he would take a day and we'd have a, a little league day and he would sit and he would talk to the kids and, oh that's great yeah he would he would he would spend a lot of time with our kids that's for nice him to, hear. to come out and yeah. talk to, to know him the way that we know him yeah for him to come out and bash uh, bash the players to me, and I thought, wow. That, isn't that is telling? Really and by the way, Derek Jeter just did it yesterday, too. He said it was a black yeah, guy I for mean, the sport. If you're just joining us for speaking with Bob uh, Bertoni, he is the Little League director of Pennsylvania out there, and he has stripped the Astros, the Houston Astros name from his Little League's teams. Let me ask you this, Bob. What, if anything, can the Houston Astros organization do? Can some of these players do? Uh, a year, two years, five years down the line for you to say to yourself, you know what? They've paid their dues. And uh, I think what they've done uh, I, I, will be okay now for me to uh, put the name back on these little league teams and call them the Astros. What, if anything, can they do to change your mind down the road? Become accountable. Yeah, I think they have to admit what they did. They have to come out and admit that what they did was totally wrong. Um, I, I, I don't think anybody will ever forgive them unless – Unless they give back the trophy, I hate to say that, yeah. but I, I, I think that's the first hurdle. Uh, I think if if MLB doesn't want to do it, then then they need to do it by themselves, volunteer it over. Mm-hmm. So something. say, look, we cheated. This is how we won the championship. We don't deserve this. That's the first thing. Two is you know to admit that you know they they have to to go to leagues now, and I think they have to put themselves out there to the younger players and explain to them, look at what we did was wrong. You know, meet with, uh, get out into the, into the youth sports environment, whether it's baseball, basketball, football, whatever, but make yourself available to these kids and say, Hey, we screwed up. Um, and, and what we did was wrong. Um, and, and listen, guys, if you think that the Astros are the only ones that did it, I'm not, I'm not sure that's the case. I don't know that for sure, but I'm not sure that's the case. But in the same token, they got to send the message that cheating does not belong in sports. And, you know, just make themselves available and accountable for what they did. So yeah. so you, you mentioned how Aaron Judge is in your backyard. What's also in your backyard is South Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which will be the location of the 2020 Little League World Series. Do you think that you banning the Houston, the, the Astros name from your league, will this be widespread across the, across the country? Do you think that you'll be kind of the, the trailblazer for this? Or have you heard of any well, other leagues that, that have, you know, they've heard about this that have considered doing the same thing? Well, you know, <laughs> for some reason, you know, our story really took off uh, on a national level, but we're not the first. I mean, there have been leagues out in California, in New York, uh, that have already done this, that have already recommended it. So I, I think, you know, Little League and Major League Baseball have a great relationship, yeah. and they work very hand-in-hand. Hand. I um, So uh, I, I think, you know, we're trying to take a negative – and see how we can put a positive on. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but, but you know, we're in the business of educating. Even though it's youth sports, we're still educators. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think, you know, our message is going to be to try and work hand-in-hand hand with Major League Baseball and, and say, listen, this was wrong. Let's try and make it right. Do right. I think it's going to be widespread? Yeah, yeah. I do. I don't think it'll be. Mm-hmm. I don't think it'll get the publicity that we got. But right, yeah, right, I right. think. I think everyone is going to say, "Listen, we got to take a step back." And yeah, well, Bob, let me to the kids. let me just say this. 
Bob, uh, for any parent out there that has a problem with what you did, they're an idiot, and their kids shouldn't be playing minor league or should be playing a little league baseball. Uh, I applaud you, Bob, for doing Thank the right you. for doing the right thing. It, it is so crystal clear you're doing the right thing. It's, uh, it sets a great example for the kids. At the same time, hold a ca- hold these these adult professional players and the organization accountable. Uh, like I said, I couldn't agree with you more with everything you've said on this show. I wish there were more people out there like you. And, uh, again, thank you so much for taking some time to join us, Bob. And uh, we do hope, uh, and I I guess we shouldn't hope for too long because I'm not sure it's going to happen, but we have a little hope out there that the Astros players and the organization eventually will take full accountability. I don't know if that will ever take place, but we're glad that you are holding them accountable, Bob, and we do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your kind words. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Bob. Bob. Bob Take care. Thank you. Take it easy. Bob Bartoni, Little League director from Pennsylvania here, stripping – the name, the Houston Astros from his Little League teams, I love it. I absolutely love it. So, you know, you could be a selfish player. If you're like an Altuve, maybe you don't care that these kids are learning that you're a cheater. Maybe you don't care. You have all the money in the world. You still have your MVP trophy. Maybe you don't care. But maybe you do. I can't get inside these players' heads. What I do know is this. They have not been held accountable. There is no question that they were uh, Altuve was wearing a device There is no question that he had a device on, but he has lied constantly. I think Altuve is a selfish prick, and I I don't see anything changing with some of these players. I'll tell you this. If more leagues are banning the name Astros from their teams, these players are going to lose a lot of youth support, which is going to cost their endorsements. It's It's going to cost them so much money and so much respect from the next generation of baseball players. Now and, listen. and you know what? They deserve every single piece of it, especially, you know, had they apologized, had, had they said any type of semblance of an apology, yeah. but they've just been, they've denied, denied, denied. Bregman That's... Bregman gave the closest thing where he said, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we messed up, we broke the rules. Correa literally told someone else to F off because they didn't know the situation. Jim Crane claimed that they were going to win no matter what. And Altuve has denied, has denied total wrongdoing and claimed he was getting, that he had a tattoo that he didn't want exposed because it wasn't finished. That's so ridiculous. I, th- these Astros, I, just the way that they've handled this situation, they deserve, at a, at a minimum, one-year suspension. Title gone. Crane sells the team. And honestly, I, I, would, I would prefer if I didn't hear from these guys ever again, at least yeah. in, in the realm of professional sports, yeah, especially Altuve, baseball. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he had a, a tattoo Come done on, the night before a playoff that's a, game. That's embarrassing. What a joke. Just admit you're a cheater. Just do it. Just admit that you knew Araldis Chapman was going to toss you a change up high in the zone and you smashed it out to, to bring yourself to well, the World you Series. Can make just, the, just admit you it. You can make the argument that the way they've handled this is worse, is worse yeah, than actual the deed itself. I mean, that's how bad uh, it is right but, now. But that, but that also shows you how bad the deed itself was, how calculated they were, and they think they're not going to get caught. They think that they that, that they can't prove that they had devices on their By person. the way, this is what we know. They, they think that they can't prove that if you know the pitch before, <laughs> in that 45 seconds while the pitcher's winding up, if you know the pitch, that, that it's not going to help you. Have, well, a, have a stronger that guy, bat. That guy, <laughs> I mean, the owner, should never be able to, to be in front of a microphone yeah, again. That was a mistake to begin with. What awful. an idiot. Uh, these players are embarrassing. They're all embarrassing the way they've handled this situation. Oops, I'm sorry is not good enough. It is a joke the way Major League Baseball has handled this. It is a joke the way the Houston or- organization has handled this. It is despicable. Yeah, and obviously, Rob Manfred, it's not a piece of metal. Uh, they work very, very hard for these trophies. Very, very hard for these World Series trophies. And I think Rob Manfred has has, has no business being a, com- a commissioner. He needs to be gone as well. well. I don't think Altuve will ever win an MVP ever again. No, no. And I, I hope they don't make the World Series. I hope they don't make the playoffs. They just won 11-1 it's yesterday interesting. in spring so, training. So, so I, don't my, wanna, I don't want to see him. I don't want to hear from him. But, you know, it's interesting. Now, my opinion is every single person that was responsible for this should have been suspended one year. And then on a probationary period, and if they ever get caught doing anything again, whether it's steroids or any type of cheating, they're done for the rest of their career. So that's what I think should have happened. But I kind of like Bob Bertoni's idea where they should, uh, you know, cut all their home games in half and make them play on the road all year. Right, that would, I, which would cost the owner money. Right, that's right. what that's all about. Because that, that's why, what we want. Why not just force – because the franchise has increased in value by about 
two hundred percent in the last three years. Why not force Jim Crane to sell the franchise at the two thousand sixteen valuation before all this cheating took place? Well, listen, I agree. That's with what you. I would recommend. Listen, I agree with you one hundred percent. But we all know that's not going to happen. The way Major League Baseball's handled this is a joke, just like the way they handled it. The, you know why people are not on steroids now? Although there are still some cheaters out there. You know why? It's got nothing to do with the commissioner. What was it, Bud Selig back then? Yeah, it Bud had nothing, Selig. It had nothing to do with Bud Selig. You know what it had to do with? Jose Canseco writing a book. That's what a joke Major League Baseball is. If Jose Canseco doesn't write that book, Juiced, guess what? Half the league is probably still juicing. Oh, yeah. It took a book by Jose Canseco to police Major and, and, League Baseball. And the guys that are juicing now are going down very, very quickly. But it's interesting. People, I hear people say that, well, you know, if the Astros make the World Series, everybody's going to watch because they hate them so much. That's not the case. This isn't, this isn't the Patriots where you had to watch Tom Brady, where you had to watch the Golden State Warriors because they killed everybody during the regular season and they were arrogant and they were cocky. This isn't that. People literally just are disappointed in the Houston Astros. They don't want to see them. If the Astros make the World Series, mark my words, it will be the lowest rated World Series in the history of of professional sports. By the way, what parent, what sane parent would have a problem with this Little League director banning the Astros' name? What parent would have the ignorance to contact the director and say, ah, oh, my family's a big Astros fan. I don't agree with what you're doing. Or whatever. What moron would do that? Are there really dumb parents out there that are actually, it's amazing to me. What type of example do you want your kids? You want your kids to look up to a cheater? Look up to an organization that cheats? Is that what you want? This guy is doing the right thing. We'll take a few quick phone calls on this. Try to squeeze a few in at 702-257-5396. Again, that number is 257-5396. Let's go to Emmett. Emmett, you are first up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Emmett? Hey, just enjoying the beautiful day. So I'm not an Astros fan. I'm not uh, really too passionate about any one team in major league, but I played baseball my whole life. This, mm-hmm. this is shocking what happened. So my question, I don't have a comment. I have a question. If you guys can help me understand how come there's no talk about legal implications. We're talking well, about there is. playing away game. No, Emmett, there is, is. someone going to see jail. Time? Emmett, Emmett, this well, first fraud. Yeah, no, I, yeah. first of all, Emmett, I agree with you. And number two, we had an attorney on last week. The attorney oh. is, the attorney is representing a pitcher. Mike Bolsinger. Mike Bolsinger yep. is his name. He got lit up in an inning against the Astros and, and, when they were cheating. Here, here's how bad he got lit up. He had 29 pitches in one third of an inning. He got one out. He right. gave up four runs, four walks, three hits. So and he got and, lit up. And then they cut him. So and then they cut him. Then he lost. He right. lost. He lost so his Emmett, job. He was already a journeyman, so it affected yeah, his, wow. the, so, the, his long term earning potential as a professional right. baseball so player. So you get. So you get that. So Emmett, we had his attorney on the show. They are following a lawsuit against the Houston Astros organization. I think if he wins, Emmett. You make a good point. There's going to be more lawsuits. I think this organization yeah. can be sued. So, yes, I think there are legal ramifications. Do I think somebody's going to go to jail? Probably not. No, 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 no jail but time. I think yeah. there's going to be financial. Financially, I think you could see other lawsuits. And, and, yeah. and I think you could see someone who had a big bet on the Dodgers in the 2017 World Series that they were cheated out of that. There could, yeah. be, there, there could be a lot of yep. six-plus-figure yeah. wagers that yeah. were placed. Now, granted, it would just be in Las Vegas. That's the one place where it was legal at the time. Yeah. But there could be some major wagers that, to be, that in my opinion, should yeah. be refunded because, under those circumstances. Because, because Emmett, uh, not only gamblers lose money, but there are careers that have either ended or have been exactly. s- significantly affected. I want those players responsible, not just the Houston Astros organization, You know, uh, not just ownership. I think some of those players should be sued as well. If I, have, if I could just add, too you know who i really feel bad for who we're not talking a lot about is the staff for the astros who are clueless to what's going on by their team but think of their reputation oh yeah just just their on their resume yeah just their association advertising for the astros you got a hard job next season well there's no question what what about the sponsors of the astros that are paying 10 to 20 million dollars a year to sponsor this team that makes them look pretty bad too because the astros are profiting off that yeah. The reason they spend that money is because they're so good. Well, maybe are, are they so good because they cheat? Or are they so good because they're so good? So you have uh, that argument as well. Real quickly, I want to go to Bob. Bob, unfortunately, we're, we're we're almost done here. We got about thirty seconds for you, Bob. What's on your mind? What's up, Bob? So what's up with Pete Rose? So he gets banned for life, and Houston Astros get a pass. It's a joke, Bob. It's a joke. It's I am on. I am on Pete Rose's side. I always have been. He never cheated. He gambled on his own games. He didn't intentionally lose. Bob, I am on Pete Rose's side 150%. It's a joke. Have a good day, brother. All right. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, he makes a valid point. What about Pete Rose? Listen, I don't think Pete Rose is the nicest guy in the world, 
With that being said, he was a hell of a baseball and player. There's a lot of really not nice guys who are who are Hall of Fame athletes, not yeah. just baseball players, but, basketball players. I mean, Michael Jordan, who we just talked about earlier, wasn't the nicest guy. The to bottom a lot line of people, is, but he was an amazing basketball player. What Major League Baseball has done to Pete Rose, the way they've handled the steroid issue, and now the way they've handled this Houston Astros cheating scandal makes them look awful. And they I'll look like what, they just look awful. They have a lot of work to do, and that's why I believe. That it is in the best interest of Major League Baseball for the Los Angeles Dodgers to win the 2020 World Series, and I think they're going to win it. I hope. I hope you're right about that. We're going to take a 21-hour break tomorrow on the show. Pete Buttigieg, brother-in-law, will be joining us. He says that Pete, Mayor Pete, is anti-God. That's going to be interesting. We'll uh, talk all about that tomorrow, and of course, the Democratic debate tonight. We'll get to all that tomorrow, folks. Have a great day, Sean Hannity. Next.